All right, so there we go. A beautiful loaf of bread. Right in half. Good look. Beautiful bread. How soft. Perfect bread. Perfect bread without kneading. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to show a way to make no knead bread that has the texture and flavor and finish of a kneaded bread. I've done videos before on how to make just old-fashioned bread by kneading and uh, in general I would insist that nothing really comes close. Uh, but this has a few tricks that make it come so close that I've stopped kneading my bread. This is so close to well-kneaded bread that I've just, it's so easy by comparison. So I don't know if I'm going to make the title of this video uh, a new no knead bread or slightly kneaded or an easy knead bread. But anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about as we go along. This is really easy to do. I'm just going to make one loaf uh, and uh, let's get started. So I got some uh, boiled water here, okay? And this is essential for getting this wonderful texture without, you know, kneading the bread 100 times or 50 times or 20 times or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tablespoon of flour in this container, all right? And now I'm going to add about, not a quarter cup, but just, just enough water to make this tablespoon of flour into a paste. So I'd say that's about an eighth of a cup or like two tablespoons, almost like a two to one ratio. One tablespoon of flour, two tablespoons of water. And just whisk it around with a fork till it's all nicely broken up. Okay, that only takes a second. Now all these little steps, this is gonna sound complicated, but this is easy to do. This takes like two minutes to whip up. Uh, you know, if you're not making a video and explaining everything as you go. Okay, now what I'm gonna do while stirring is I'm gonna add boiled water that I just boiled in the kettle until this measuring cup is at one cup. All right, we're almost there. Okay, that's a cup. Now I'm just gonna stir that a little bit. Okay, so we got a cup there. All right. It has a smell. Yeah, it smells just like if you've ever had this wonderful breakfast, cooked breakfast cream of wheat, right? Grits, some people call it. I don't know if it's exactly the same thing, but cream of wheat is what we call it here in Canada. You know, kind of a cooked porridge made of wheat. It smells just like that. It smells wonderful. Okay, now what I'm going to do is get some cold water, and I'm going to add cold water until it's about one, uh, one and three quarter cups full. I'm adding three quarters of a cup of cold water. Okay, now again, we'll stir that. All right, now I'm gonna crack an egg. Just crack it in a bowl first in case there's something weird going on in there. Okay, got one egg there. All right, so I got a nice perfect egg. I'm gonna add that to the mix. This egg is gonna, egg's a leavener, natural leavener. It's going to help the bread rise, it's going to help us get lift, and it's going to get that yolk with all that fat and the protein and all that nice stuff. It's just going to give the bread a flavor, a nice flavor. All right, so now we got lukewarm water, just the right temperature for, for making bread. It's about one and seven eighths cup. This is the, the how full this uh, measuring cup is now. Okay, so now. Oh, I just put water everywhere. All right, so now I'm just gonna pour that into a mixing bowl. And I'm gonna start adding some other stuff. I'm gonna add, you can add a, league, a, a, a level or heaping teaspoon of salt. I recommend a heaping teaspoon because it tastes better. And you can add anywhere from a tablespoon, you can add no sugar, a tablespoon of sugar, up to a quarter cup of sugar or molasses, whatever. You want any molasses spread, just use molasses instead of honey or sugar or whatever. And you don't have to use sugar if you're on a, a low sugar diet or whatever. I got an old honey jar and there's about, it's about one tablespoon in there. I mean, you, you do not need to add sugar to bread. It'll rise without sugar. Uh, but it adds a nice flavor, <laughs> right? I mean, people want, you want people to like your bread, right? So the, the honey adds a nice flavor. So does just plain old sugar. 
Um, and molasses, of course, is great. Brown sugar is great. I mean, whatever, right? Or nothing at all if you want it to be uh, low sugar. Uh, the salt. Uh, I've read that you need salt to help control the rise of the bread. I don't know how true that is, but I do know it just tastes better with salt. If you're on a low salt diet, maybe add half a teaspoon of salt. If you're, you know, you don't like a lot of salt, just use one teaspoon. Um, if you're, everything's fine. <laughs> Last time you had your blood work done, everything was fine. Heaping teaspoon of salt is great. All right, so now we've added everything except the flour. So I'm going to add two level cups. This is just regular, all-purpose enriched white flour. The cheapest flour you can buy. And all kinds of different flours you can use, but this works just fine, right? You want to get more exotic, you can play with that. When I add the two cups of flour, I get a very wet mix. Okay, very wet. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera in and show you the rest of this. Alright, so we can see we've got a nice, very porridgey like mix here. Okay, at this stage, I add uh, a tablespoon of yeast. Okay, reasonably level tablespoon of yeast. I mean, you can just use a teaspoon of yeast to make a loaf of bread, but I find with this no need bread, a tablespoon works better. If you're going to knead it and knead it and knead it and do all that, then I would just add a teaspoon for one loaf of bread. But for this, and this is instant yeast, so it doesn't have to, you know, a lot of uh, traditional recipes for working with yeast, you put it in some water with some sugar and you wait for it to come alive and blah, 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 do all of that. You don't need to do that here. All you got to do is stir this around about 20 times. I think I've done at least 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. Let's just say the yeast is sufficiently distributed throughout uh, the mixture now. Okay. Now I'm going to add another cup of flour. This recipe takes about four cups of flour, but sometimes I, I, I cut short of that. Really depends on how it's behaving. Um, you know, some days are just more humid than others, and the flour, <laughs> I don't care what kind of flour you got, it's got water in it. <laughs> so, might have a higher or lower moisture content, depending on the day, especially where I live, East Coast. Alright, this is still quite wet, as you can see. So, based on the look of this, I'm going to add a whole another fourth cup. Sometimes I might add uh, three-quarter of a cup or seven-eighths of a cup. I'm going to go with a full fourth cups. This is four cups of flour. All right, I'll put the directions and all that for this recipe in the uh, description box of the video. All right, now you can see the flour is sticking to the spoon, or the dough is sticking to the spoon, coming away from the bowl. I'm still just, I'm not using a fancy mixing, you know, no fancy tools here, just my hands and a tablespoon, a soup spoon, right? You don't need much, right? This is the ideal bread for someone, you know, living alone in an apartment or whatever. Uh, also, I mean, I tend to make, if you make two loaves of bread, I mean, I make this for my family, I tend to make it one loaf of a time because if you make two loaves at a time, uh, it will, it can go bad. This, I mean, there's no preservatives in this other than a little bit of salt, right? So that it doesn't last long. Of course, usually it doesn't last long anyway because everybody eats it. If I make two loaves at a time, I got to keep them in the fridge, especially in the summer. Um, otherwise, we just make one loaf. But I mean, to make the best use of your oven, especially if you have a large family, you want to go with two. Uh, today I'm making one just to keep the recipe really simple, but normally I make two <laughs> and put them in the fridge. It really depends on my mood. Anyway, that's fully mixed, okay? So just give that, I mean, this is basically what I'm doing right here is kneading, right? But there's no point in doing too much of that. Just make sure it's, it's well mixed. So I'd say just, just move, you know, count, <laughs> count to 20. I don't know why I like the number 20, but count to 20 while you're mixing it around. I'm going to say that's 20, all right? All right. Now we've done all the work I want to do. Now the next stage is waiting. Okay, so all we're going to do now 
I'm going to put a lid over this to hold the heat in. And we're going to put a towel over it and another towel over it. All right. And I'm just going to let that sit on the counter for about an hour. You can let this sit longer, an hour and a half. I wouldn't go, it's really wasting your time if you go any longer than that. But so I'm going to let it sit on the counter for about an hour. This is the first rise. Okay, we'll see you in an hour. All right, so it's been about an hour and you can see that the, uh, the lid is lifted up from the pan. So it's time to, to punch this down and give it a bit of a stir, give it a bit of a work over. And we'll just take the spoon and just work it around. About, give it about sort of 20, 20 jabs, 20 turns, right? Just like that, four, five, six, that sort of thing, right? Do it about 20 times, that's all you need to do. And that basically counts as kneading, <laughs> all right? I don't know how many times that was, but let's say that's enough. All right, so now all I need to do is put the lid on, cover it back up, wait about 30 minutes, and this will be ready to put into the loaf pan. All right, so it's been about 30 more minutes and uh, you can see the lids back up off the pan so it didn't take it quite anywhere near as long for that second rise. So now it's time to take the lid off and uh, stir it down and give it another sort of vigorous, vigorous stir. All right, so now it's all left to do is put this, transfer this into the loaf pan. All right, just use a spatula to get all that nice dough out. Now all we're going to do now is let it rise for about 20 minutes and that's all it should take to be ready to cook. All right, so you can see this is not evenly in the pan so once you get it in the pan just uh, sort of shake it around a little bit, get it sort of situated, get it evened out in there, <laughs> right? That's enough. Okay, now let me show you what I do to get this to rise really nice and a uh, so a really good cooking technique. I'm going to take this, I'm going to fill it with hot tap water. I'm going to put it in the bottom of the, the oven. I'm going to put this uh, on the rack in the oven and let it sit like that in that hot, steamy, damp environment for about 20 minutes. All right, so I got this filled up. This also helps to clean the bowl, right? Because you got hot water, it's basically soaking. This is originally how I came up with this technique. <laughs> I thought, well, as long as it's going to be sitting with hot water anyway, I might as well use it. All right, so this just provides heat in the oven, a nice incubation sort of thing, and also add some moisture to the interior of the oven. When you actually do cook it, uh, that moisture gives you a nice crust. You take, you take this bowl out when you cook it, but you know, just a little bit of moisture inside the, inside the um, oven really improves the quality of the crust. Anyway, nothing's on here, this is all off. It's just an uh, insulated environment with a heat source with the, uh, you know, the loaf pan sitting on top so you can get a really good rise. So we'll see in about 20 minutes. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. You can see the dough has risen. You let it rise any more, any longer. You let it keep rising, it'll pour out of the pan and make a huge mess. So yeah, I usually set a 20 minute timer, but really check it after 15 minutes, 16 minutes. Once it's about an inch, or three quarters of an inch above the pan, you got it. That's it. It's done rising. So it doesn't take long. All right, so I'm taking the water out. Close her up. Just going to set the oven here. I turn on bake, and I'm going to set it at 450 Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius. Canadians, we do things in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. And I'm setting it to 400. Go. All right. And I'm going to set a timer for 40 minutes. 400 degrees at 40 minutes. If you use molasses and you had a quarter cup of molasses, you got to do it 350 for 50 minutes or it'll burn because it's got a lower burn point. But anyway, for white bread, 40 minutes at 400, cold oven, loaf in the pan. So, so it's in there, the oven's on, cold oven, set it to 400 for 40 minutes. We'll see you in 40 minutes. All right, so it's been 40 minutes. Let's pull this thing out of the oven and have a look at what we got. Should come right out of the pan. And we 
you got a perfect loaf of bread. It's got that nice hollow sound, right? You got a little bit of butter or something like that. It's good to brush a little bit of butter onto it. I don't know why, but it makes it taste good. <laughs> I don't know if it helps. People always say you should do this. I've always done it. Maybe it helps at the store. I don't know. All right, so there we go. A beautiful loaf of bread. I'd cut into this, but anyone that knows anything about bread knows that you should never cut into a freshly cut loaf, even though that's the thing you most want to do. It needs to sit for a little while, at least half an hour, I'd say a couple hours. Uh, just like this, air it out, right? That way you've got some yeast in there, you've got some moisture in there, you've got some steam, all the moisture levels in the bread. It's, it's sort of, it's drier on the crust. It's drier on the outside, moisture on the inside. You need it to equalize, <laughs> right? So as hard as it is, I gotta wait a little bit before I cut into this. Uh, but when I do, I'll show you what it looks like. So we'll see you in about an hour. All right, here we go. Just cut it right in half. Give yeah, a good look. Beautiful bread. Look how soft. Perfect bread. Perfect bread without kneading, although there was some vigorous stirring. Now let's just uh, cut off a piece from the end, I guess. And give her a taste. Here we go, the moment of truth. Put the butter onto it there. Just take half. I don't want to ruin my supper. Let's give that a taste. Oh man. I mean, it's just white bread. That is so, so good. <laughs> oh man. So there you have it. I know I need bread. A little bit of stirring, a few steps, a little bit of time. But it is way, way, well, well worth it. It's a be beautiful, soft bread. All the spring you want. Beautiful texture. So let's say you make a no-knead bread that tastes and has the texture of a kneaded bread. A few steps, a few different ingredients, but still pretty simple. Hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, get out there and get at it. Have fun in your garden. Have fun in your kitchen. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here, go to Vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year. And use my coupon code GAVS23 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items in the order. Check out the description box of this video for details. You can buy everything you need from Vessies. They have seeds, fruit bushes and trees, soil amendments, pest solutions, tools, clothing, and lots of other stuff too. So yeah, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here and they sell something you need, buy it from them using my coupon code and happy gardening.